Atrial fibrillation, AF, is a complex condition requiring tailored management to optimize patient outcomes. The 2024 ESC guidelines emphasize a structured AF care pathway, focusing on comorbidity and risk factor management, stroke prevention, symptom reduction through rate and rhythm control, and continuous evaluation. This framework ensures that all aspects of a patient's health are addressed, mitigating the complications associated with AF and enhancing quality of life. By systematically assessing risk factors and comorbidities, healthcare professionals can develop an individualized treatment plan the cornerstone of effective AF management is shared care, which fosters a collaborative environment among patients, families, caregivers, and a multidisciplinary healthcare team. This approach not only empowers patients through shared decision-making, but also promotes education and understanding of the condition. Equitable care remains a priority, addressing health disparities based on gender, ethnicity, disability, and socioeconomic factors. By ensuring that all patients receive equal attention and resources, healthcare systems can enhance treatment efficacy and accessibility. Key messages from 2024. ESC guideline atrial fibrillation. General management, optimal treatment according to the AF care pathway, which includes C, comorbidity and risk factor management. And they avoid stroke and thromboembolism. A reduced symptoms by rate and rhythm control. And E, evaluation and dynamic reassessment. Shared care patient-centered AF management with joint decision-making and a multidisciplinary team. Equal care, avoid health inequalities based on gender, ethnicity, disability, and socioeconomic factors. Education. For patients, family members, caregivers, and healthcare professionals to aid shared decision-making. Diagnosis. Clinical AF requires confirmation on an ECG device to initiate risk stratification and AF management. Initial evaluation medical history, assessment of symptoms and their impact, blood tests, echocardiography, other imaging patient, reported outcome measures and risk factors for thromboembolism and bleeding, comorbidities and risk factors, thorough evaluation and management critical to all aspects of care for patients with AF to avoid recurrence and progression of AF, improve success of AF treatments and prevent AF-related adverse outcomes, focus on conditions associated with AF, including hypertension, heart failure, diabetes mellitus, obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, physical inactivity, and high alcohol intake. Assessing the risk of thromboembolism. Use locally validated risk tools or the CHA2DS2, VA score and assessment of other risk factors with reassessment at periodic intervals to assist in decisions on anticoagulant prescription. Oral anticoagulants, Recommended for all eligible patients, except those at low risk of incident stroke or thromboembolism. CHA2DS2, VA1 anticoagulation should be considered. CHA2DS2, a VA2 anticoagulation recommended. Choice of anticoagulant. DOACs, apixaban, dabigatran, edoxaban, and rivaroxaban are preferred over VKAs, warfarin, and others, except in patients with mechanical heart valves and mitral stenosis dose. Range of anticoagulant. Use full standard doses for DUAX unless the patient meets specific dose reduction criteria. For VKs, keep INR generally 23, euro and in range for 70% of the time. Switching anticoagulants. Switch from a VKA to DOAC if risk of intracranial hemorrhage or poor control of INR levels. Bleeding risk. Modifiable bleeding risk factors should be managed to improve safety. Bleeding risk scores should not be used to decide on starting or withdrawing anticoagulants. Antiplatelet therapy. Avoid combining anticoagulants and antiplatelet agents unless the patient has an acute vascular event or needs interim treatment for procedures. Rate control therapy. Use beta blockers. Any ejection fraction. Digoxin. Any ejection fraction. Or diltiazem. Verapamil, LVEF 40%, as initial therapy in the acute setting, an adjunct to rhythm control therapies, or as a sole treatment strategy to control heart rate and symptoms. Rhythm control. Consider in all suitable AF patients, explicitly discussing with patients all potential benefits and risks of cardioversion, antiarrhythmic drugs, and catheter or surgical ablation to reduce symptoms and morbidity. Safety first, keep safety and anticoagulation in mind when considering rhythm control. For example, delay cardioversion and provide at least three weeks of anticoagulation.